Hey everyone, my name is Bo. I'm here to talk about Polymer as the network layer for interoperability. Uh, before I get started, uh, this is my third modular summit now. It's, it's good to be back. You know, thank you everyone for listening in to this talk, and thank you for the uh, hosts and co-hosts for uh, putting together this event. The goal of this talk is to motivate a higher level understanding of what virtually networked or interoperable blockchains could look like. A little about about myself, I'm a technical co-founder at Polymer. We're working on initially bringing IBC to different L2s on Ethereum as an L2. I wanted to start with a few definitions. On the internet today, we have clusters of devices connected to routers forming local area networks or LANs and these local area networks are then connected to each other over a wide area network, or a WAN. LANs form clusters of intranets, while WANs span large geographies forming the internet. WAN protocols require or operate over more than two degrees of physical distance or separation, and LAN protocols operate with two degrees or less of physical distance or separation. On the verifiable internet, or Web3, we have layer twos connected to layer ones forming clusters of intranets, or virtual LANs, which are connected to one another over a wide area, a virtual wide area network, or WAN. Once again, these WANs, these virtual WANs protocols operate over two degrees or more of virtual distance, while virtual LAN protocols operate with less than two degrees of virtual distance or separation. So now that we have some definitions down, I wanted to take a look at history and see if we can find some inspiration there. The internet was born in the late 60s with the arrival of ARPANET. The first message was sent between two computers on the ARPA network in 69, the first email was sent in 71, and the foundational concepts for TCP IP were introduced in a paper called A Protocol for Packet Network Intercommunication. Uh, in the diagrams above and in the drawing, we can see what the early ARPANET looked like and how it grew over the years. Following this, following ARPANET demonstrating the power of connectivity for scalable, horizontally scalable network computers, we saw businesses adopt these LAN protocol technologies in the 70s and 80s due to the rise in business use of various devices, electronic devices such as computers, printers, it's important to note that this is not a comprehensive list of all of the LAN protocols that arose during that time, but the important thing to note is that a lot of these companies decided to create their own LAN standards or protocols in instead of adopting, initially adopting a universal one such as TCP IP. Additionally, these LAN protocols could technically work over a wide area network, uh, but they were used primarily in a LAN setting due to poor scalability efficiency, routing, and security than their WAN counterparts. The modern internet was born in 83, when ARPANET adopted TCP IP. In 84, the OSI model is, uh, and protocol suite are officially published. In 85, NSFNet adopts TCP IP from inception. And by the late 80s, TCP IP sees growing market share. Uh, at roughly 70 to 80 percent adoption. X25 is a second, it comes in second at 10 to 15 percent adoption, and while OSI protocol did not see meaningful practical adoption, it was, it was influential in its conceptual concepts and theoretical concepts. In fact, the OSI model today is still used to describe networking architecture. Let's draw some parallels between the early internet and the early verifiable internet. The verifiable internet could be said to have been born in March of 21 with the launch of IBC in the Cosmos. In the same month, the first IBC transfer was sent between Cosmos Hub and Osmosis. The IBC network is reminiscent of the early ARPANET network. The major difference being that ARPANET ended up adopting TCP IP years later, while Cosmos and the IBC network uh, adopted it from inception. 
Uh, and in the diagrams above, you can see the growth of this network over the years. And with the launch of IBC in the Cosmos and the launch of DeFi across many different L1s in 2020 and 2021, this motivated the need for virtually networked or interoperable blockchains. And starting in 2021, we start to see the launch of many different interoperability protocols, which formed various intranets. These protocols, similar to their predecessors in the 70s and 80s, ended up creating, which created their own LAN standards uh, and for their network devices. Many of these interoperability providers and layer two ecosystems ended up creating their own virtual LAN standards and protocols instead of adopting a universal one like IBC from inception. These protocols all require less than or equal to two degrees of virtual distance or separation to work. Currently, the verifiable internet is in the process of moving on to a modern phase involving virtual WANs. IBC is the first in our protocol to transition to a virtual WAN. In September of 2023, Polymer's multi-hop channel spec is officially merged into the IBC specification. And in March of 2024, the first multi-hop IBC channels are created on Polymer's testnet across various L2s on Ethereum as a demonstration of WAN pro properties. And currently, the, the multi-hop IBC channel implementation is in the process of being upstreamed to the reference IBC implementation in Go. So why do we need virtual WANs? Are virtual LANs not enough? There's three key problems uh, motivating the need for virtual WANs. We have a rapid pace of growth in both the number and size of virtual LANs or intranets. We have scalability issues with the architectural model of existing virtual LANs, point -to -point, such as point-to-point -point protocols or hub-and-spoke protocols. We also have verifiability issues in the, in, in the routing over short and long virtual distances. Intranets, intranets, intranets. In the diagram above, we can see that each layer two ecosystem and each shared sequencer forms an intranet and both the number and size of these internets are growing at a rapid clip. If we zoom out, we can see that this rapid pace of growth extends beyond just Ethereum and its layer twos and shared sequencers. We can see that third-party interoperability protocols overlay their own internets on top of existing blockchains. Additionally, we see that competing settlement layers also create their own internets. Besides the rapid pace of growth, we can see that we have scaling issues with existing virtual LAN protocol architectures. Point-to-point -point systems or P2P systems require one, a virtual distance of one or direct connectivity to work. These scale poorly in the number of connected chains or N squared in the number of connections or increased interoperability bandwidth required. Hub and spoke solutions represent the other most popular category of interop protocols today. These require a virtual distance of two or one hop connectivity to work. While this scales better than point-to-point -point systems in the number of connected chains, the hub then becomes the bottleneck for interoperability bandwidth. This solution is also suboptimal for connecting modular rollups within existing L2 ecosystems or intranets. In addition to the scalability problem, we also have a verifiability problem. A stream chain identifier is not meaningful as an identifier for source chain and destination chain identity. This is not uniquely enforceable on chain. And to motivate this problem, uh, we've included a diagram in the slide. So we start on Ethereum, emitting a message intended for Solana. A malicious relayer then picks up this message and sends it instead to Monad and Barachain. Neither Monad or Barachain have the ability to uniquely enforce that the message was only sent once from the proper source destination to the intended, uh, to the intended destination. 
This means that you have to rely on trusted third parties and off-chain coordination or off-chain routing, making it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to decentralize the relayer set of an interoperability protocol today. So how do we build this virtual WAN? Let's use IBC building blocks. IBC connections help establish the virtual topology of a, of a virtual WAN. Connection IDs can uniquely identify a connected chain. A pair of connection IDs can form an IBC connection. And connections, connection IDs are enforceable on chain. This verifiably enables compressed data flow over the network. IBC channels express application layer connectivity over a virtual topology or virtual WAN. Channel IDs uniquely identify an application in the network, and a pair of channel IDs forms an IBC channel. Channels can then be established over any number of connection hops or any virtual distance. This also allows for optimized interop bandwidth to flow by leveraging compressed connection level data flow. Polymer then leverages these IBC building blocks to create a virtual WAN over the virtual LANs on Ethereum. A Polymer hub can be deployed and run within each internet on Ethereum, sharing the settlement infrastructure with its connected peers. Multiple Polymer hubs can then be interconnected together, combining these in virtual internets into a verifiable internet. On-chain is the new online, and on-chain networking is enabling verifiable routing over virtual LANs and WANs. And Polymer is building a scalable on-chain network layer for the on-chain era. Let's build towards a world with infinite connectivity and beyond. Uh, feel free to contact us at our socials, try out our testnet, or you can reach me at 0xshake on Twitter. Thank you.